G -G 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 Unit Roundtable. We're back. I'm your boy, Corey G. Graphic gangster, Cole Susack. That's Danny Walter. And at Trey Speed, who front squatted 300 like it was easy money this morning. It was a joke. Fucking <laughs> joke. <laughs> Fucking joke. It, 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 it was out, it's out there on the internet, too. I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> it's out there. Yeah, because... Uh, it was, it was in a podcast with Tyler. We were talking about how Trey's sneaky fucking strong. Fuck yeah. He's sneaky too. fucking strong. Well, now he's like moving for real like a ninja. He's in the shadows by himself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's, a, he's a silent assassin. <laughs> he, is, he is a silent assassin. So we had a lot of great feedback on having at King Holland, a.k.a. Jacob Holland, on the podcast for his one mile, <laughs> which I love, by the way. I actually have a, a – my godfather's actual name is King. And I always thought, like, when you name, yeah, his name is King O'Toole. I swear to you, he's Irish, obviously. <laughs> yeah. So, like, when you name your kid King, like, I, that's like, a, that's like a, you know, it's different if it's a nickname. But you know, I just always thought that was it. And he's not like doesn't have like crazy swag or anything. But it was like one of those. Yeah. I mean, he's like ninety now. But anyway, so obviously. Uh, we had a, a lot of great feedback on just lunges and Jake's pursuit of the record. We attempted the record and fell a little short. So I think what will be interesting is talk about, you know, maybe future programming, your experience, maybe even lap to lap vibe. Um, you know, three of the four of us were there. So I want to turn it over to you, Jake, and just let them know what happened and uh, how you're feeling, buddy. Yeah. Well, first, thanks again for having me on. Really cool. Um, I'll go lap to lap. Uh, first lap, 525 pace, um, which is a PR. <laughs> it's like laughable. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Wait, repeat that. 525. 400 meters. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, it was – I felt great first lap. Um, you know what? Jake, share with the setup, though. Like, paint the picture on – what Trey had to do, what we were doing, how, who was there. Like, give him a give him a vibe of, and then Trey can throw in some video too. I think it'd be cool. Yeah, for sure. Um, Trey was taking video, and then he Cole, step to step, step to step. Yeah. Right. Okay, so I had to have video evidence, uh, two timekeepers, and two official witnesses, and yourself and Don were the timekeepers, and then uh, Cheryl and Todd ran a little late, but um, John. <laughs> uh, a little late. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. John uh, Gerlock, right? Yep. Yeah. Gerlock uh, stepped in, and I appreciated that. Um, they were my witnesses. Um, from there, uh, Cole, I told you you did the uh, photos, right? Yeah, I did. Yep. I, I took photos. Um, and then I had to submit it at the end, obviously, if I beat it. Um, I had the cover letter, which described everything what I needed to do, and then um, witness statements. And I had all that ready, ready to go. So before I actually started, you had to say three, two, one, go. And then I had to do a little intro, say my name, my application reference number, and what I was attempting. My name is Jacob Holland, and I am attempting to break the fastest lunge mile for a male. My application reference number is 200-509-154-2009. FLM. Ball game, dude. Come on. Let's go. Yeah, baby. Got this, Jake. Let's go. Come on. Just like every other day. Let's go. Let me know when you're ready, Jake. Give me a count now. Come on, Jake. Let's go, Jake. Let's go, Jake. Let's go, Jake. Here we go, baby. So as soon as we did that, uh, we just went right into it. Well, and the reason why I wanted you to say that is because we got off a lot of motherfuckers lunging. But I wanted them to know, like, this isn't just me and you going out there and then we just tell Guinness Book of World Records. Like, I don't know how many people watch Dude Perfect, but they do. You know what I'm saying? They're always breaking world records. I watch it with my kids, so I see them. But so the official, I wanted people to understand that. Not only was it all set up, but the knee had to touch. You had to come up straight each time. So maybe just uh, say talk about that real quick. Yep. So knee had to touch, and I was confused because I saw the video that we uh, watched together. Um, the guy, so he touched, brought the foot, and then touched the other foot before he swung it through, if that makes sense. Okay. So the back leg came, came up, touched, and then he went forward, which would slow your pace down way more. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I'm thinking, like, if 
if I got a touch, it's going to be really difficult, let alone just swinging through. So I reached out to the current record holder on Instagram and he said, you can swing it through. You just got to make sure it's straight. So that's when I talked to you about, and you're like, just slam the shit out of your knee and then use that momentum to come up and straighten it out. So I did that and it was fine. I mean, I also had three pairs of knee pads on and, um, had to straight the leg. Um, what else was there? Uh, I lost train of thought. Really so, the, uh, so I just wanted people to know, like the, uh, I guess the level of what you had to be conscious of during the process. And then you can lead us through each rep or each lap if you like. <laughs> yeah. So man, it's, it's been, it's just all come full throttle here and it's just, uh, thinking about it, just trying to, <laughs> I'm losing train of thought. I, don't, I really don't know why, oh, but, you're uh, you're fine. I'll lead you through it. So lap one. Um, we see you come out the gate. I, I haven't been there like Trey's been there, so maybe Trey can talk on this a little bit more. But we see you come out the gate at a pace that was, you know, I knew was a PR or roughly, but I was wondering if it was too fast out the gate. And do you do you think in your mind that that you should have paced easier on the first lap, or did was the adrenaline and you were just smooth, or was it? Um, do you have any, I guess, changes that you would make to lap one? And then I want to hear Trey, as he saw lap one, what he was thinking too. Yeah. Um, to be honest, no, that's just how I train. That's how we train from the beginning and I hot out the gate. That's just how I train the whole time, whether it was with a 10 pound vest or body weight, I'm going full throttle the entire time until I just can't move. So I wasn't concerned whatsoever. When I saw that 525, I said, perfect. I got 50 seconds of wiggle room basically. And I was ahead of schedule through my song. Um, and then I, when I finished 800 meters, it was, well, the second lap was 6.05. Mm -hmm. So at that point, do quick math. It was like 12.30 or 12.15, whatever it was. So I said, okay, perfect. Still on pace. And then, well, rewind back to lap two. I could feel the lactic acid start to build up earlier than it usually did. Mm -hmm. And it was the 600 meter marker. I remember hitting that because I thought in my head, all right, 600. One more lap is a thousand. I've done a thousand, one hundred forty some days in a row. Like no, no problem. But that's when I was like, oh man, this is way too early than what I needed. So finish lap two, go into lap three. That's when it really started to build up and build up, and and it started getting to me mentally. Um, and then when I hit that thousand meter mark, it got even worse. And then twelve hundred, it just like I got hit by a train. Seriously, it was so bad. Um, it was like I was maxing out every rep the last the last lap. And lap three was seven minutes basically. And then lap four was nine minutes and that's just not acceptable. So yeah. and the, uh, the official time is 25, 21 yes. for the record. And you missed it by basically two minutes and a few seconds. Right. Yeah, I, okay, yeah, I would say I was, the only thing I could, so I've never been to that level of what I saw you at, like to where one time when I tried to make a mile with 80 pound vest, I quit after lap three because I literally felt like every fucking rep was a max out and it was like it was fucking brutal so if that's how you felt yeah. i mean to get to finish it jake to me was a huge win because i knew how hard i could see it on you and you just you just you just wouldn't give up dude yeah and i wanted to big yeah, time I, I got to like the 1300 meter mark and 1400 meter i was like i know i'm not gonna get it I, I know i'm not it's like why am i finishing i was like i got all these people out here supporting me i, I can't I'm not a quitter. I was never raised to be a quitter, so I'm not going to quit. I finished as strong as I could, whether it was taking three steps, quick break, but I knew really when I brought my other foot in and touched it, it was like, it was over. Like I knew it, I wasn't swinging through. I wasn't keeping momentum going and it was done. I was, I was disappointed, but like we talked about, it was a learning lesson and, and I'm ready to get back after and, and train again and go for round two. Yes. Yeah. I, I thought it was really fucking, really fucking cool how, Cause like, cause you knew that you missed the time. Yeah. It's like, so everyone out there, like you listen to DMX fucking throw it up. So you knew Little John or, or, or sorry. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, so you knew the entire time, whether you were on pace or not. And you could tell by the lyrics in the song, where the song was at, yep. whether or not you're going to get it or you're going to miss it. Yep. So did you ever like, like, was there a time where you like, you're like, I shouldn't be right here. Like whenever the song's playing. Yeah. 14, so you, 13 to 1400. So you fucking knew right there that, yep. you know, and then just like, but continuing to finish because you had fucking the 4am crew was there. You had your parents in from Michigan. I thought that was fucking baller because yeah. if I was in that situation, I'd be like fucking, I'd be pissed off. Like, you know, yeah. 
but at, yeah, I at, thought it was cool. At the 13 to 1400 meter mark, <laughs> uh, I looked at you and dead in the eye, and I almost just threw my headphones out. I couldn't even hear the song, to be honest. All I heard were you screaming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Serious. I, uh, I don't know what it was. I just tuned it out. Yeah. Sometimes I can tune things out like that, either, even if it's in the gym. Sometimes I don't even hear the music when I'm under the bar. Um, but that, that, that's all I heard from 1300 to when I finished was him. I thought you heard the whole last lap. He's yeah. Screaming, yeah. screaming, screaming. I knew it was going to be really close if, if, you, if, you <clears> if I kept chance. the pace. Yeah. 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 If I would have kept that seven minute pace, it would have been within 10, 15 seconds, which was great. Mm. But I just, I really, I physically, I tried my best to, to keep that pace and I just couldn't. My well, legs were and I knew when we got to that point, I was like, it's going to take basically we're going to be if you kept the pace it was going to be right at the edge yeah. that's why i was like i'm about to scream at this motherfucker every rep if i have to yeah, <laughs> yeah and i and i needed it and it, that's what helped me keep going yeah. and not quitting and this, the, everybody being there it was it was great very appreciative of everyone coming out and yeah boy this is where separation's on, at this is where separation's at come on baby it's just pain baby yeah come on. yeah yeah Come Find on, that rhythm, hang it on the line. Find you can that lay rhythm. as long as you want. Come Find on, that rhythm. hang it on the line. Yeah, boy. Yeah, come on. Keep Find that rhythm. On, Keep it going, baby. Come on. Come on, come on. you there. You there, Let's Jake. Go. Let's go. You there. Find come the on, rhythm. Jake. Come on. come on, come on. Nice push. Go. Let's go. I need another one with Jake. Come on. Come on. Let's go, baby. Let's come on, go. you're almost there. All day. You're almost there. All day. Let's come go. On. Come on, Jake. Come on, come on. It was awesome, and I can't wait to do it again, but having a crowd probably not gonna happen I, I don't think it affected me because my parents asked me like do you think us coming down affected your performance and i said no like you always say you should show up and mm -hmm. put a show on i don't think that had anything to do no with it. you didn't nope. look you didn't look nervous to me at all for that in the beginning i was a little nervous yeah. but it, i think it being dark still helped i didn't yeah. see you really see anybody <laughs> <laughs> that was cool yeah. sure so like going into the the day of like the you know three to five days prior how did you feel? Did, were you tape, you know, tapering going into this? What did your like nutrition look like? All that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm glad you asked that because I think I tapered too much. I really did. My last max effort day was 12 days out with the 1200 meter PR 18:06, and I was on top of the world. I I felt like I could have just smoked it that day. And it's funny because I PR'd on the slant board, PR'd on a, the dead mill the day before. So my legs were still a little sore. Yeah, I had, had no idea I was on a PR. I asked Trey, "What am I doing today?" Body weight. Okay, we're gonna PR. So you just go out there and do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, after that, I started doing a little bit more of whole body cryo and some Norma Tech on my legs and salt bass, and I did it way more and more. And my legs felt awesome. I wasn't sore. I was hitting thirty minute thousand meters to taper it back and not get my heart rate too high. I was keeping it between 120, 125. I was stopping and counting it to keep track so I didn't burn too much energy and I just thought too much of an, into it. I overthank the whole 12 days. I just laid around, did my lunges, stretched, stretched yeah. a ton. I was stretching like crazy at night, using my gun, everything. I, I was mean, trying to not to mention you don't have a template whatsoever. No, what <laughs> motherfuckers no, lunging a going. mile, you know what I mean? So you're literally shooting in the dark. <laughs> yeah. So like every you're kind of blazing the path right now. So now you're just kind of seeing what works, what doesn't work yep. the best for you. And now I know. And I mean, we exactly. trained like the whole time without taking rest like that. Yeah. And that's what I need to do. If I do anything, it's going to be like a one or two day taper bag, maybe three. Yeah. But not 12. That was, that was <laughs> yeah. silly. It was, well, now you know. So that's good, man. Um, well, I think the first thing to get out of the way is I think everyone here knows that you can break the record. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 For sure. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, yeah. it's clearly obvious. You're, I think you know, too. I do. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah, your fucking pace was insane. I mean, I was out there, what, twice a week, sometimes three times a week with you, recording yep. you, and this fucking pace is nasty. Yeah. And the, combined with the fucking stride. Yeah. Yeah. Literally legendary. <laughs> it's about yeah. to literally be legendary once you fucking get the record. Yeah. yeah. Now it's all about like kind of like how uh, in powerlifting you just have to put together a solid day. Like that's pretty much just what's like yep. what's a like has to happen. Yeah, and we talked about it. I did it on a Sunday. I don't ever try to PR on Sundays, and I didn't really think about it because all I thought was day 550 in a row of at least 800 meters. Like break the world record on day 550. That'd be awesome. Great story, but. And I'm not going to do it again on a Sunday. It's going to be like a Tuesday or a Friday. Because that's when we train for PRs, mm -hmm. Tuesdays and Fridays. So I looked on the calendar. November 17th is a Tuesday. We'll see what happens. We might have to apply again and 
because it's going to take probably 10 weeks for them to even accept it because it took them 10 weeks the first time. Mm -hmm. I haven't logged on since, but I need to do that one this weekend and see what I need to do. Yeah. So from my point of view, you know, one, I learned a lot by being there that day. I, I think I can help a ton this time around. And like Danny said, you are blazing the path because it really doesn't exist, right? Yep. But the taper, what I experienced um, early in our process with all the band training, one, our daily um, level of fitness is far more superior than most people's, right? And especially in this case. In a 12-day taper, what I found with the volume that we keep is way too much. And because, and then you get cute with the cryo and this other shit and it's fucking just ain't what we do right now. I think that stuff helps, but not whenever that's not what your norm is. It'd be different if that's what you did the whole time. Right? So I think it's easy to do that. It's great learning experience. Well, what I found this, this happened to our guys, we tapered almost like a West side taper. It was like eight to 12 days. Those guys don't even touch anything for like a week. We went there and every one of the dudes looked terrible. And I was like, it's too much time off. Like we, we actually did, we got super compensation, which, which the Russians talk about, which is when you taper just the right amount and you eat and you rest, then the body actually gets stronger, has higher performance than it did previous. Cause we're beating ourselves up all the time. But then there's a diminishing return on the other side if it's too many days. And so that's why we, with the band protocol, if we're on what's would be four bands or now we're using blacks, whatever on a Wednesday, we were squatting Saturday morning at the meet and it's just the right amount. You know what I'm saying? So our last squat before the meet is band tension plus the bar weight equals the opener. And then it's a day off. It's make weight and boom, you're squatting. And the reality is I don't think this taper should be probably much different. And the fact that you're going to do it on a day, you normally exert max effort. That's, that's definitely something I understand the narrative you were going for, which made a lot of sense, but I, I'll tell you this. When I had that adversity of going, when I thought I was going to squat 781, missed it, bombed out three times with Louis Simmons there, with going, and then when I came home, I was my face was on fire, which is why I started squat every day, which changed my whole career. I don't only think you're going to beat this, Jake. I think you're going to smoke it. And then I just think, honestly, as shitty as that was, the story is just much better and has more sauce to it when you have to go through in the first, what's the first thing I said to you when I walked over? You're going to beat it again. What? Mm. I said, took David Goggins three times. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It did. It really did. And I, I listened to that the, the week prior. Well, the week leading up to it, mm -hmm. I listened to his whole uh, world record in, in his book. Um, yeah, I, I didn't want to do it. Number two, cause I just me being me, I wanted to get the first try cause I know I could do it, but that's not what God had intended for me. So we're going to go for number two and, and get it. Yeah. Well, now, like the next time you go into it, you already you're like you already know how it's going to feel. Yep. Like you know what leading up is going to do to it. Because I know a lot of times, especially in powerlifting, whenever we would take so many days off, you fucking start getting your head, and it starts to everything that you're about to do starts to become much bigger. Like the inf uh, <coughs> mentally, just every days. everything's inflated. Like the hype's inflated, everything like that. So now, whenever we do a meet, it's really just like. Uh, the day before you want to do a meet yeah let's go fucking do it and just show up and execute so i think that like next time you do it you're gonna feel so much fucking more zoned in you i know? agree it's funny you say like you overthink it the last 12 days that's all i thought about i was just overthinking everything i was like all right what can i eat for lunch all right what's what's for dinner uh oh i can't go out there i haven't had that the past six weeks i don't want yeah. it to mess my stomach up i was overthinking everything um, it's like micromanaging yourself a little bit. I did. <laughs> yeah, it was it was bad, and I I get I got anxious. Yeah, and I just couldn't do it. Like I didn't like it, and I'm not gonna do that again. Yeah. So like with like specifics, like what are like three things that like you absolutely want to change about what you did, whether it's on the day of the, the you know leading up to it, whatever it is. I think uh, maybe so. When I talked to you about squatting, you said do it twice a week. Mm -hmm. That following week, I did it twice. And then the following week after that, I did it once. And then after that, I didn't do it again. I think keeping at least one or two days of squats will help a lot, um, whether it's front or I prefer front. This is, yeah. I like it better. Um, I think keeping that in there and then doing the slant board heavy Huge. a little bit more. Yeah. And then the dead mill is, that's an everyday thing. I like that. So at least those. Yeah. And maybe um, not just eating pop tarts every night. I think being a little more. <laughs> I mean, even though I felt great on them, yeah. it was just the sugar built up. I just I'm starting to get a lot, a lot of sugar in me, 
and that would just I feel like feel a little good. sluggish or something like yeah, that. Yeah, to be honest, I was I was shitting like crazy. Yeah, all the time. As soon as I got back from the gym, all the time, <laughs> or right when I got to the gym, it was the, bad. The pre workout combo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> it's like opening a trap door. <laughs> I would definitely. <laughs> I definitely keep the three scoops of creatine in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. For sure. So, so can we talk about like creatine, just, Cole? Creatine. Oh, dude, creatine. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> never get off of it. Just take it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking creatine forever. But uh, so we've been talking recently. So, pretty much, let's talk about like the bands. Like, like what what's next for training wise? Because you obviously need to do something different, and we're like trying to come up with like some actual yep. like training program with that. So talk about like the devices with the bands that we're gonna try to fucking yeah. m- like magically make it make happen. Yeah, so I took the band with the handles, uh, like I showed you guys yesterday, and I took it to the track, put it on my shoe, like when you step, it doesn't move. But then I moved the handle to the side and the or on the inside and the band was on the outside so it wasn't like rubbing against my leg and it actually worked pretty well. I only did a few just to see feel it out, but I'm gonna test it out this weekend and and take my time and see what it feels like but the band i had it just hooked up over my neck but try to rig something up with velcro at the end maybe cut it in half and whether it's around my chest so it's at like shoulder height but just to get that band tension i think would be kind of strap cool. it i think it would be so cool if like you could build up to doing like fucking four bands yeah. like something like that <laughs> dude that would be crazy four for like a hundred take one off and do three I'd yeah just keep going but yeah i think one day a week could be nice with like 25 pounds, mm-hmm. whether it's 800, 1200, or just take my take my time and do a mile with 25 pounds just to build up that strength and the lactic acids because I know it's going to be there. I think that could be big too. What was your playing weight in basketball? Yeah, in basketball, 225-ish. What do you weigh right now? This morning was 238. <laughs> so I think that the other thing was the relationship between body weight to recovery. So I think that you probably need to be closer to your playing weight personally, because I think that's going to, that's obviously if you just do the straight math on load volume, if you're 20 pounds lighter, that's going to just affect you completely different. So I think that approach, but the problem is, is being able to recover. So you might, that's where we need to tweak some stuff. And I think I can help with, it might be a whole nother meal. It might be um, way more sodium, but I think if I think back to when I was the best at my lunges, it was right before when I was doing, um, like shows, I'd be like 177, 178. That one time I did like 40 pound vests every day for like a couple hundred days for 800 meters. And dude, I was, I haven't, I didn't really time myself then. I definitely wasn't as fast as you or Trey, but I was fucking fast and I was fucking peeled. And I just remember when I would shed that thing, it was fucking, I just felt like I could go forever. So, oh my gosh, unbelievable. And it's because I was walking around 20 pounds lighter on top of it. So you got to figure that was like a 60 pound swing of me doing at the track at 195, which is probably a normal weight for me if I just eat regular and lift, right? The being like basically 180 and then training with the vest and then just shedding it, it was literally like felt like rock, like a rock star. So I think there's there's something that's got to happen, especially if you have a 10 week period, yeah. you go like a pound a week, you know what I mean? Like, right. and even be 10 or 12. I, I think that'll make a huge difference too, Jake. Yeah, I think so too. And I noticed towards closer to the date, I was getting heavier and heavier with the more carbs and things like that. The day I PR to 10 pound vest at 1200, I was 225. So then the 10 pounds was 235 and I calculated the, the volume and it was like, with the vest was like 288,000 with the steps and things like that. So I think you're right. I think the 225 is a good weight. Yeah. And I, I usually walk around between 223, 228, but with all this eating and the pizza and pasta and all that good stuff, I uh, just, I put weight on real quick and the sodium. I mean, I'm eating lunch. Like it was rice and beef. All I could taste was salt. It's <laughs> literally the only thing I could taste. I took a picture and it was the whole, you couldn't even see white rice. It was basically pink. I'm legit just pouring as much as I could. And then I started drinking pickle juice the week before. Yo, I've actually I've actually been <laughs> drinking fucking pickle juice a lot recently. That shit's so good. Yeah. It, I, I didn't mind the taste. And then I started eating the pickles because the juice was gone. So That's amazing. <laughs> I usually drink probably like five ounces of it before I go to sleep. Dude, one, of the, one of the go rocks I did with my cousin, it was his first one. He did not take the nutrition seriously, Uh-oh. let alone the fucking training seriously. <laughs> um, and... 
we get it. We're on the Cleveland Browns st- stadium stairs, and he's cramping up his foot and the ankle is so fucked, like because he's cramping so bad. Mm-hmm. And then like our cadre, our leader, he like gave him pickle juice, which he's lucky he gave him that because he's like <laughs> hobbling along like he just went to war. It looked like, mm-hmm, dude. and it worked. And went yeah. away right away. Uh, pretty pretty quickly. Yeah, within like 15 minutes. Yeah. What's another sneaky one is mustard. In uh in high school, uh there was like one football game. It was like a hundred fucking degrees out. Everyone yeah. was cramping. <laughs> they gave us fucking mustard packets. We had a <laughs> we, we had to suck on the mustard packets. Dude, it was fucking legit. You brought the mustard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, they didn't have uh they didn't have the packets. They they put them in like little fucking cups, and we had to drink it <laughs> out of the cup. That's weird as. Fuck. That is some fucking Ohio Valley shit right oh, there, bro. Dude. I, feel, I I had like an envision of like how they do the water bottle. They had like a mustard like yeah. like, <laughs> like they do fucking squeezing yeah, mustard off. <laughs> Well, two other one, good ones for, like, hydration. Op- I mean, obviously, aside from, like, the amitos and stuff, like, the from max effort and everything. But, thing, I mean, things that I've used is, like, Salt Stick is a company. They just have, like, little tablets. <laughs> That's not an actual stick. Dude. All right. Here we go. Here, here, it, is. here it is. Here it Here's is. Here's the turn, everyone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for it. <laughs> uh, anyway, they're tablets. <laughs> um but I've used those, and they help me, you know, I guess not cramp up and everything and stay hydrated. And then um, one of my best, best friends, Joe, he's an Army Ranger, and, I'm, and he's the combat medic. So I'm like, dude, what do you guys use? Like, what do you give to your guys, like, when you're out with whatever movements you're doing? And he uh, – there's, like, this concentrated um, – uh, hydration like complex thing but they just come like in little like tubes or whatever but it's a uh, drip drop that's the name drip of it up on the salt that's stick the- <laughs> drip drop on the salt stick yeah <laughs> no but they're just like a little like powder form you throw in there but it's like <laughs> yeah. it's like concentrated in, like electrolytes and stuff like that that might be something to look into i don't know yeah I did start drinking some Pedialyte too. Trey recommended some of that. Oh, yeah, there I drink yeah, Pedialyte. I love Pedialyte track season after a yeah. long night. <laughs> no, yeah, for real. Yeah, yeah for sure. That's yeah. how I got on it. Seeing how the thing is steering the wrong direction, I'm going to tell you something. I was watching last night. Um, I was watching you guys. Has yeah, what were you watching? Last has night? everybody seen Karate Kid? <laughs> Yeah. The original yeah. Karate Kid. Yeah. Okay. All right. So they got the new Netflix one or Hulu or whatever, where it's like them now, and it's called Cobra Kai. Right, so it's so cheesy but amazing. So <laughs> let me paint a picture for you real quick. Paint so it, Johnny, the dude that fucking had the blonde hair, they like ah, that guy. <laughs> he fucking he's a loser now. He's like drinking all the time. Like he's mad because Dan Larusso beat him, right? And Larusso's a fucking car salesman. He's like running shit. He's got these billboards. Well, that dude climbed up there and painted a dick on this fucking <laughs> right. It painted a dick on the fucking um, billboard. And so the dude's driving to work, and there's a big dick painted right on the fucking billboard. And then, this is amazing, his competitor sent him 100 sausages for lunch. <laughs> and said, basically, so I, I thought of you, Danny. I should have oh. sent it to you. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, if you guys want to watch a really cheesy fucking Netflix show, Cobra Kai is pretty good, especially wow. if you watch Karate Kid growing up. But beware when you're watching that part with your kids. Yeah. It's a little bit awkward. <laughs> you get any questions? Where do we go from here? Uh, fuck, I don't know. Dre, you got any other questions? Um, I don't, honestly. Yeah. So, I mean, I spent all the time at the track with them. We just talked then. <laughs> I had this idea. Do you think him doing, like, max out? So he has max out PR days of, like, distance, everything like that. What about incorporating, like, a speed day? Which would essentially be like it'd be yeah. the same volume, a thousand, like thousand, twelve hundred meters or whatever, but just a hundred yard like lunge fucking sprints, max out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that might be something to. Well, I think I think the the key is yes, yeah, somehow to, and what you've been trying to find with the dead mill with the slant is replicating that next level of lactic acid threshold. The other thing I thought about is. You know, should you be, which is going to take a while. Well, actually not that long for you. I mean, most people that do 800 meters, it takes them as much as it takes you to do a mile. And it's like, cause I, I did it one day for like four days in a row and then thought it was a fucking terrible idea for me. At least I was like, what if I just do a mile every day? And I wondered if you've thought about like, what if that just became your training? Although it's going to be brutal. Yeah. I've honestly thought about it. And I think, uh, we talked about this already. The training, 75 day training period. I did a mile twice mm. and before that it was Christmas Eve mm-hmm. Christmas Eve was a 32 minute um, mile 
and then uh the 10 pound vest mile was 40 minutes and that was i tried something new that morning and it was not a good idea and i almost threw up like three times but uh and then i did a mile four weeks out and that was my pr 27 22 i'd even pr last sunday that's what i was most disappointed about I didn't even pr so i think i need to do miles more yeah yeah for you sure. at least once a week I mean, yeah i mean my base is a thousand right now yeah no so at that point yeah like 200 more is only three is three laps what's one more lap i can i can recover from a mile um not like the 27 minute pace every time and i'm not going to get that every single time mm -hmm. but if i try to push a consistent maybe like 30 32 for a few times and then a few times um at like 27 again mm -hmm. because that lactic acid built up and the soreness i feel the past three days i've never felt before the lactic acid feeling I never reached in the gym. I never reached it on the slam board, dead mill, ever. I thought I had it because when I trained for the 1200, I was getting there and then went, went to the gym and mimicked it. This lactic acid buildup was a whole new level. Yeah, it was, probably it was just insane. You're, probably just because you're so fresh. Yeah, I was. Just fucking was pumped too up. Fresh. Yeah. Yep. It just built up way too quick, too. Yeah, dude. If you got if you got the like your standard of was a mile every day, that'd be fucking crazy. Because it's eventually like us in the gym, dude. If we like bench, me. if we bench just three fifteen, everyone can do more. But if we just hit that like consistently, no matter what, even if we're having a bad day, mm -hmm. that's fucking still really good. Yeah. So if you got that that level, man, it'd be fucking smoke show. Yeah, like maybe like a Monday, Tuesday mile, Wednesday twelve, Thursday twelve or whatever, Friday Saturday mile mile, Sunday eight for active recovery. I think, I, think, uh, I think going like that, like so almost casual. like you crescendo up and then crescendo down, I think that'd be really smart. Because I think at the end of the day, it's like you just didn't – think about if you had only had 10 weeks and you ran it like that. You would experience that distance literally five times the amount per week that you did now. Yeah. I easily think you can handle the volume. You're go You're going to drop some weight during that, and I think you're like – your mental understanding will yep. be just so much more. That, that's what I'm saying. That's where there's so many lessons through putting yourself out there. And yeah, I, I wouldn't have the fam next time. Not, not because I don't think you're going to do it, but because then you just don't even have to fucking worry about that. I, sug I, mean? I suggest that he does it like, like silent. Like he doesn't tell yeah. anyone. He just like tells just whoever you, whoever you have to that's need it. and just go, yo, we're fucking doing it this day. Yeah. I mean, I like, yeah. like no hype whatsoever. Just fucking go out, execute, and then everyone knows that you fucking broke the world record. Yeah, I think that's how it's going to be in November. I just got to apply. But I also thought of talking about everything and training. Um, why don't we try maybe doing legit lunges in the gym with the bar on my back? Yeah. Like going, trying to go heavy. Like you're talking about like just one step, maybe backwards or mm -hmm. step forward, whatever. And then... Just work some to a one them, one rep max. Yeah, with some lunges. of them like deficit reverse lunges too are mm -hmm. awful. Mm -hmm. but make yep. you so strong. We, um, so yeah, so way back in the day, we used to work up a max effort day on lunges where I think I made. Um, right. I know back in the day it was like around three hundred pounds. I made a front rack three fifteen at the CrossFit gym yeah. for a single each leg once, <laughs> and I saw Mo Lee, or uh, Claret do four hundred five, which was insane. <laughs> fucking Clydesdale. Yeah, his fucking legs are huge, <laughs> but. Um, I think what we used to have where it was front squat, lunge, lunge was like one of the, and I saw a lot of sketchy stuff where I thought dudes are about to blow their knees out. So that's why I don't have it in. And our guys are advanced compared to most of most people. So that's why I took it out. But I think what would be really helpful though is, and I know Matheny really liked this too, when we would do like five to eight reps and grab the 100, 125s and do them on the mat. So we would just go up and back on the mat for three sets and work up. I think that would be really beneficial yeah. for sure. I agree. And I also I saw Coach Myers does those all the time mm -hmm. with heavy, heavy dumbbells. I think I tried it a couple of times, and I said, I think I grabbed like 50s, and I, I was dying. Uh -huh. And then he grabs 115s. Very yeah. impressive. Yeah, I agree. I think heavy lunges is going to be where it's at. Yeah. Just have, get that feel up. have you ever thought about like going off the track, like going uphill or anything like that? Um, the dog park I do them around is very, there's a small slab that's very slight uphill, but mm -hmm. I have done them uphill before and it is a huge God, difference. I couldn't too. fucking believe how much harder that is sometimes. Yeah. I don't even know where to go though around here uphill, to be honest. Yeah. My apartment complex is pretty straight. Flat yeah. And yeah. I have no clue. I'd have to do some research. Where, where are you exactly? 
in Columbus. In Columbus. Um, by Easton. By Easton. Okay. Yeah. Right off the doctor, by the airport. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. The, um, what I think is, uh, speak on this too, Jake, because you obviously were an athlete, played in college, but it's like, talk about, now obviously it was an obsessive level most of this time in the last 12 days were overly obsessive probably, which is what happens when you try to break a record like this. But talk about like the purpose about having um, like really a goal to this level. Like, doesn't it make you feel like one, there's a level of separation. There's no question that we're already putting ourselves through, but it, it, I think it gives you like a whole different sense of just, I don't know, just life and fucking push and like opportunity and just like reaching up for something that's, you know, really, getting you there and like a lot of people don't really even get in this area of things yeah um like we talked about last time during quarantine i was just down in the dumps and just nothing was on the calendar i didn't have anything to look forward to so i i applied and then boom it switched and you always say put something on the calendar um and that helped so much um yeah i would obviously highly recommend putting it on the calendar and doing something but the whole process week by week i was getting more confident um, just talking with, whether it was with work or just being in the gym. Um, I felt stronger, mentally stronger, everything, um, just because of the record and training for it and putting it on the calendar. So yeah, I, I would have to say that that did help a lot. A lot of growth. Huge. Yeah. I grew so much. Like just the videos with Trey alone. Yeah. Oh, the, from the first one, I, <laughs> I watched it the one, uh, I think I watched it like a week prior to my record and I was like, I just looked awkward. <laughs> and, uh, and then at the end, I'm you look awkward. You see Danny's first podcast. And that's what I was just like, <laughs> I watched it. I'm just messing. No, but for real. Yeah. <laughs> you say chode boy. <laughs> <laughs> see, that that's been a big thing. Um, I mentioned, uh, dose messaged me and said some nice words and like coming out of my shell. And, and I really did. And, uh, I didn't know I even had another level of coming out of the shell and it's, it's helped a lot. I big time. When you just mentioned you just don't want to be average. I think you said that on yeah. the last one. Yeah, I did. And it's hard for people to, like, wrap their minds around, like, what that actually even means when they're yeah. just, you know, going through the motions every day, like, going yeah. to their work, coming home, watching Netflix, or whatever they're doing. Yeah. It's like, why are you like, why are you doing this? Like, why do you want to lunge a mile? So it's, yeah. like, hard. It's funny you say that. Quick little story um, about a friend of mine. He trying to start a podcast and he asked me to come on and he's not a member so i'm not really concerned about it but he says something about like talking about mentality like someone like your average person like yourself and as soon as i read that i was like i'm not coming on your fucking podcast i'm not fucking <laughs> <average. I'm> out <laughs> yeah. get the fuck out of here I, I was like i'm i'm not average i'm not yeah. in your category it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. The fuck out of here <laughs> yeah yeah it just i was gets offended to the, i was like <laughs> you can think i'm average and i mean we'll it just gets to the point where like our minds are so callous. Like we fucking go to the gym at four. You're fucking going for a world record. Like we're not trying like to be out here fucking doing what everyone else does. No. You know? No, no it's that's hilarious. Fuck, that was amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nope. <laughs> and and I really don't. Even with work, like I'm trying to do the best I can every single day. And what go back the week prior? What did I do? What can I do better? Um, so it just carries over into everything you do. I love it. <laughs> I love the blank stare of like. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Like, like the that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I give that back to people when they give me some dumb shit like that. Like, <laughs> motherfucker. Like, obviously, you don't know that what it takes to be like this, or you wouldn't ask me that dumbass fucking question, or or put me in that category. Yeah. Fucking drives me crazy. I, I wanted to thank you though too, Jake, because it really um, pushed me as I was driving home from watching you attempt that. I was in my head like. Motherfucker, you only got 16 days left till you got to fucking dunk this basketball. You better get your shit together. Like, it would really, like, once again, I had a calendar date, which is going to be the 18th of September for me. And it really, like, I'm down a few pounds since Sunday. And I, I've been, you know, I'm also going to tie my cheats tighter this week, next week. I don't want to be dehydrated on the next couple weeks of training. Like, and that's what we should be doing for each other, right? Um, it's pushing each other with these things like seeing Trey smoke show that weight this morning, you know, it was awesome. The things that all Cole and Danny with the go ruck, like unbelievable. The things we're doing in business, like we need, that's what our crew does. Well, that's what a lot of people don't understand is that it's like, it's a team that is pushing each other in to be the one of one category, which is Goggins continually talks about. And then if you have a lot of people operating like that, 
it's to be expected that, oh, Jake's about to do, try the world record. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. W- w- what day do we go show up? Like, I mean, that's like, you're not going to get an answer like dude gave you. Like, that's not how it is. Like the expectation for success and next level push is really what our crew's about. A lot of people don't really understand that. And maybe, maybe you can speak on that because you're one of the newer guys over the last, you know, six months or a year. Yeah. Um, I noticed it right away as soon as I came and obviously I was following for a year before I came out here. So I kind of knew, had an idea, but, um, being there, uh, physically was just completely different. You guys are in there helping each other. Cause you know, um, you're competing against each other, trying to beat their person's way. And I was trying to compete with somebody this morning and I failed and Now I'm going to think about it and I'm going to come back next week and, and try to do it again. So, um, and I'm, it just helps me push a little harder and, it helped it carried over onto the track today and i texted trey as soon as i was done i told myself i need to stop being a little bitch and <laughs> feeling sorry for myself because the past two days i'm not kidding of course. it took me 40 minutes to do a thousand meters i was staff was like oh my leg oh my leg so today i said i'm i'm gonna do it like i don't care i'm sore i'm gonna push it and get out of here so isn't it funny when you catch yourself you're like what are you doing <laughs> like oh yeah stop. i could feel yeah. it a little bit i'm not gonna lie i could feel the past few days like man i I missed it. It's like, what, what can I do now? <laughs> but what's helped a lot is coming in and squatting right away. I just, I love it. It's, it's great. And I was, I, I was feeling good this morning. So I was trying to keep the pace going and, and I could tell everybody started getting some good weights. So it was nice. Yeah. But yeah, just being around everybody like-minded individuals that push each other constantly. I just, I just love how like we push each other in the gym but half the time if we're like while we're not in a set we're talking about fucking business yeah. we're talking about how like our business are going and like so that push i think is really is really what separates it because if if we're lacking if someone's lacking on business they're having a the tough time then we're thinking about that trying to give them advice to help fucking push through it <laughs> so i like that the aspect the most recently yeah i agree sure. i mean i wouldn't have gotten to joe if i didn't listen to your guys's podcast about financial so mm-hmm. and i pushed me out of my comfort zone for sure um, and I talked to Trey. He sent me some apps and uh, looking at some Jordan shoes. I, yeah. like, with your chain, it was Jordan shoes for me. I was going to buy some Jordan <laughs> shoes. I've never owned a pair of legit Jordans. So. Jake. I'll buy you the Jordan shoes. You get the fucking record. <laughs> me and you will shop for the fucking stock axe. I got you. I, I, whenever Trey came through and saved me on the fucking video stuff, what was the first thing I grabbed you, Trey? Yeah, the band ones. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Because I was like, dude. I wanted to show love right out the gate. You stepped in, you came through. I knew he was a sneakerhead. Yeah. I was like, let's do this. So I got you. As long as they're not like five grand, we're good. <laughs> but but we, we'll get us some Jordans. That that's yeah. that's the least of my problems. That's for sure. I'm I'm actually thinking about like trying to like set some up to where I buy a pair of Jordans too because I've never owned a pair either. Never had a pair of Jays, uh, dude. Yeah, me either. Well, I mean, I never. didn't have them in the valley. I was like, you wearing... can't, you got no jumper. You can't get no Jordans. Oh, I had a, oh! I had a I, don't, I don't know if Danny could pull them off. No, I, yeah, I don't know. It might be weird. I think you could do it. You need uh, one of Trey's shirts yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and some J's. What Jordans do you want, Cole? I have no idea. Oh, well, I fuck. Know. I told Trey that I want to get a pair that, like, how he says it would go up in value. That's yeah. what I want the first pair to be, and then I want to get something I can just wear around. Yeah. Never really have to worry about it. I didn't, it. like, save any of the boxes or, you know, I'm, I am I need to get on the Trey tip, too. Yeah. I, I, I'm fucking... I've had, I've had so many Jordans. I'm the worst reseller of all time. Yeah. How, <laughs> see, like, yeah, I like, Trey tells me about all this stuff all the time. I'm like, I just would have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. Yeah. I think you like, look good in some blue. 11s, Cole. 11s some yeah, 11 like low 11s, tops yeah. player yeah yeah i got the white i got the concord 11s man they're like my dress up sneaks you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey get you some player that's amazing <laughs> they, they are amazing every time i wear them people are like oh this is my favorite how many you got to keep the patent leather though shining pro- approximately how many are there like how many different pairs of Jordans? Well, different colorways. Models. Well, the different colorways is like thousands, yeah, but there's like thousands. But what 30, 30, 30 either 34 or 36 different models. Yeah. But Some any mo- any model yeah. past uh past 12 in my opinion yeah. is irrelevant. I think so too. They're <laughs> ugly, bro. Yeah. Like I'm trying I to think of the ones he wears in Space yeah, Jam. The only, Those yeah, ones are Space Jam's are 11. The first, 11, tw- I think. The first yeah. 12 after 12 is irrelevant in my opinion. And then also um, a lot of the colorways that do come out are irrelevant too. Cause yeah. obviously the more popular ones are the ones that he wore in game. Yeah. yeah, yeah those yeah. colorways are, or yeah. they're, they just have some kind of special meaning behind them. They're at this point, Jordan brands kind of just slapping random fucking colors yeah, on and course. people, yeah. buy, people buy them cause they're Jordans. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. Which ones yeah. do you want Jake? 
Uh, I did like the Space Jam ones, but I know I talked to you about the really rare ones. I think they're those ones. Are they the ones the band, that he got sued for? Ones? Or yeah, yeah. that's the pair. Right. That's the pair I have. Yeah, yeah, they're one, fucking amazing. One of those Elevens or. Yeah, I don't know the numbers. I'd have to see. Yeah, a it's the ones. Those are ones. Yeah, same. Yeah. yeah, I knew those ones were the ones, and I know the Elevens and the threes. But uh, there's one, uh, the one solid color on the side. Are those twelves? <laughs> I don't even know. I, I don't know. We're all going to be sitting here on this the podcast. 11, the, 11s, <laughs> the 11s are fucking sick. The problem is every time I wear them, I'm scared I'm going to fuck them up. You know what I'm saying? Because if you, because I don't got no creases in the sides or the leather, like oh, the I patent could, leather. I the fuck out of my shoes. Yeah, maybe I need to just not care. I even had people ask me like, yo, how you, because I got the, the black cement threes. Like, how you got no creases in those? I'm like, I think I just they look better with creases. Oh, fuck Trey. My shit's looking too oh, shiny fuck. out here. Oh, you gotta wear you gotta wear your shit. You I do. Uh, you well, I mostly wear sandals, but um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, where we go from here? What else you guys got? What's going on, Danny? What do you got? Anything? You gonna do an Olympic lifting meet anytime soon? Or are you uh, on the go rough <clears throat> tip for a minute? Um, that Olympic weightlifting has been kind of floating around. It yeah, hasn't taken a hold yet. But I want to do. I saw um, you doing some cleans and shit the other day. Yeah, it's been fun to kind of do them every once in a while, but I'm I'm gonna be doing like some sort of a go ruck, unsanctioned event by myself, like hundred mile or some shit. Then you say I'm, I haven't said anything because I don't know which one I'm gonna do. I'm putting the pressure on you, <laughs> but yeah. it's either gonna be fifty, seventy five, or a hundred. Well, you already did fifty, didn't you? Yeah, so, Wait, so you can't like kiss your sister. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. do that again. Yeah, so it'll be 75 or 100. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, so it'll be that. And then, yeah, maybe I'll jump back in for do some more weightlifting training yeah. again. The efficiency with your clean and jerk, pretty solid. Well, that's actually funny because I was <laughs> talking to Blaine, one of my mm-hmm. good friends, Blaine, because he's like all in. Mm-hmm. Like, he's like strong as fuck. Like, he's, you Didn't know. Didn't he uh, clean and jerk like fucking 380 or something oh, in shit. pounds? Yeah, his top end, I mean, or what he's going for next is 160, 190, which is basically 355-pound yeah. snatch. And yeah. then, like, a, um, that's fucking strong. And then he wants to clean and jerk over 400. Yeah, he so. played ball at uh, Harvard. Yeah. He's a Pick- Pickerington kid. He's, Morgan trained with us he's today. He's fucking big. Yeah, so they're saying that's awesome. Fucking beast. Yeah. I mean, he cleans Savage. like over 400, don't they he? Do regularly. Yeah, yeah. yeah regularly. Like like on a Tuesday, yeah. he just cleans 400. He's 7, 16 years old yeah. or 17 years old. 182, 182 kilograms is, is about 400 around yeah. there. So it's like he's trying to go like 410 to 420. Yeah, so more. he's going to nationals on in December. Morgan smoked two blacks and a red with 235. Went to 275, and then in it fucking, he couldn't get through it. And he was like, that fucking pressure, because he's kind of tall, too. Yeah. He, he, because he don't really hardly ever talk. I went over, I said, now you have a concept of what that shit feels like when you see it on IG. He's like, <laughs> that jumped on me quick. Because he didn't flare, he's coming from a deep spot, you know, like Olympic lifter. He didn't flare fast enough when the tension hit him. Mm-hmm. So he could have made it for sure. And then for him to see guys make 315. Plus, he was like, you could see, like, he was like, yeah. When they came in at, like, midnight, they slept, like, two hours and came to the gym. So, what? I mean, it's still cool. Did he come in with MASH or with his? Uh, he came in with his mom. His mom's competing in powerlifting, um, I think, on Saturday, which is <laughs> kind of cool. Hey, that mom. Is, that's sick as fuck. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who does that? Whose mom does yeah. that? Yeah. And Morgan's, what, like, 16? 16 or 17. So He's crazy. one of the best junior uh, Olympic guys, like, in the country. Fucking crazy. Yeah. yeah. For sure. So fucking cool. Kids a tank. Yeah. Jake, I'm throwing it to you. Now that you're out of your comfort zone, you got anything for these guys? Ask us, ask us some some questions. Yeah. <laughs> What's you on your mind? Yeah. <laughs> ask, get us, get us, uh, yeah, get in our Cole, minds. how much creatine do you take per day? Um, <laughs> all of it. Yeah, all of it. <laughs> yeah, all of it. I used to, I used to just do like a full fucking tablespoon. Back with like back whenever I was on like the fucking gain train, like trying to gain like thirty pounds in a winter, I would go wake up, orange juice, boom, an entire scoop of creatine, and then I would have the fucking old Arnold Mass Gainer that had fucking more creatine in it. Then before bed, another orange juice, boom. Oh my creatine. god! I, I didn't I didn't do it that long, but I got fucking pretty yoked. Felt really good. <laughs> got pretty yoked. I took one scoop. For, I took one scoop consistently for. About a three month period, and I noticed a drastic difference. So I can yeah. only fucking imagine. The you know, yeah. honestly, oh, yeah. honestly, I haven't Big really difference. taken it probably like consistently in like a, probably over a year or two. Wow. From yeah. an explosive standpoint, it's the most studied thing of all time. The, fir- the first week that I got on and I PR by two tenths of a second in a 100 meter. 
Wow. When two tenths of a second in a hundred meter is a long time. Yeah, I never took it like while I was playing sports. Mm-hmm. I only took it after. Yeah, but that's the only time I've tried it. So I, I didn't. Whenever I was like pretty strong in the weight room, I never took it. Yeah, me either. I should get back on it. You guys are making you me sh- want to get back, get on, back it. on it. Yeah. All right, creatine. I, I haven't taken it since since the MP days. The creatine <laughs> cowboy is back. It's coming. <laughs> Jesus. I've been on it for a while. You're talking about creatine or coke? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, shit. Okay, uh, this is a pretty basic question first, but um, I know you always talk about put some on the calendar. What's on your guys' calendar? What are you guys training for? What, November what are you 7th, to? 4 a.m. crew. We're fucking back. Said it on the podcast with Tyler, but the 4 a.m. crew is fucking back. We're going to, going to go in there and light fucking shit up. Yeah. All of us haven't competed in probably over a year, cause no, especially, with, especially with quarantine. So, yeah, we're fucking hype. So you're, you're powerlifting me, yeah. Danny? Um, I don't have the specific date, but it's going to be the end of September is whenever this ruck is going to yeah. take place. And I think you should do the 100. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know what it's like one of those <laughs> things where, like, I know which one I should be doing yeah. or should be attempting. It's just, I mean, just <laughs> stop being a little bitch, I guess. Well, it's just obviously just being a little scared of it. I need to figure out where the fuck I'm going, too, because obviously 100 miles – <laughs> you gotta figure out where you're going. You do a straight. Cincinnati? I mean, uh, no, I, I mean, he dropped off somewhere. Hey, 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 you, you should go back in the. You should go back in the valley and just walk all those fucking roads. Oh, dude. I, yeah, I don't know. That'd be I, the longest 100 miles of your life. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awful. I don't know. <laughs> it would be. I, I would probably. I would probably try to stay on the. I'd try to stay on like bike trails and stuff if possible, so I don't you know get hit by a car. Because, like, when we did the 50 miles around Columbus and, like, <laughs> at one point we were walking down Sunbury Road, which you shouldn't be walking down Sunbury Road no. on the shoulder. Like three in the morning. Dude, it was terrible. <laughs> yeah, but we did that one. Like, we had a group of people. Um, so that one was interesting. So, like, they – there were some people that were having some real, you know, foot problems with blisters and stuff. So um, once we broke off from them, it was actually me and Linda, my girl, and we did an 18 and a half, which I think we could have cut, like, probably legit, like – two hours off of that um so i'm pretty much in this for like you know close to two days i would guess so it's just becoming like i think goggins talks about it It comes comes down to like a math equation like how many miles are you going to do per hour so you don't your feet aren't totally fucked yeah you know at mile 25 you know and then like what shoes you're going to wear what you're going to eat like so dude doing something like that would take me forever just because i walk i short step everything like i barely move whenever i walk just because of the way my hips and everything is. That would take me fucking Are you forever. saying it's because you waddle? I don't have a waddle. It's just like, <laughs> it's just like most, most... Wait, what's happening, Cole? Like, it's just like Creatine most people... Creatine cowboy. Most people take like these long strides whenever they walk. I, I just naturally can't do that. Yeah. Like I just... I walk well, slow. That... Yeah. That <laughs> Actually, I wouldn't even say I walk slow. I walk short. I just I don't, don't think it's necessarily bad in, in a case like this. I think this, it's because you're worried about what's going on up here, Cole. <laughs> Maybe that... <laughs> walk around like this. <laughs> maybe that maybe that's fucking up your stride, bro. It might be. I'm, I'm flexing my triceps at all times. That, I think that's what it is. Yeah. This fucking guy. Yeah. Jeez. But, what about you, Trey? You got, um, so you got a drop coming or what? Yeah, so I don't really have – so training-wise, I never have anything on the calendar, to be honest. But I do want to add 405 front squat now there because this morning – this morning, uh, when, Jake, when Jake texted me after he lunged – and said that he was being a bitch and all that stuff. That's exact. That's exactly what went through my mind. That's exactly why I even front squatted this morning yes. in the first place, because I was tired as fuck going to the gym. I did yeah. not want to train this morning at all. I almost like I almost said fucking slept in. <laughs> <laughs> but but so I went and I was like, all right, I'm here now. And I'm like, I'm gonna do something I don't fucking want to do, which is front squat. I hate front squats so much. Yeah. yeah. Hate I hate it. And so I want to I want to front squat, uh, 405 at 150. That'd what do you know? Wild. I've I haven't weighed myself in probably pro, I haven't weighed myself in months, maybe a year, maybe like over a year to be honest with you. I have, don't even have a, don't even own a scale, none of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I just go off the look test every morning. Yeah, okay. And um I probably I would my guess would probably be high one fifties, I would say. But I think though that I can front squat four oh five. Especially with some fucking wraps on and a belt. Oh. I mean I did three hundred this morning, beltless and sleeves. And I, and I haven't done it in a while. So, honestly, I might have to make the goal a little bit over 4 or 5, I think. Sweet. Yeah. We'll but, yeah. yeah. I mean, I just haven't been squatting. Like, I obviously, I lift in the morning before uh, you guys get there. But 
I only do upper body shit. I, you know, I do the get stacked shit, but I just do upper body shit. And then on Wednesdays, I typically only do like the accessory stuff, you know, the jumping, all that kind of stuff. I, I just don't do the back squat. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, Wednesdays is gonna be front squat day. And then um, either another, another day needs to be a front squat day as well, I think with maybe some band tension. But I just gotta figure out which one, which day I want to substitute. Cause when I cause uh, when I when I squat, I kind of take I kind of take a while to be honest. Because my SI is real sticky. I was telling you about. I yep. always had really bad SI issues. So uh, I kind of have to take a decent amount of time on my warm up and stuff like mm. that. If I like, I mean, I did only did 300 this morning. I can feel it in my SI right now. Like when I but when it gets really really bad and there's more weight, yeah. it literally like I'm in pain in the walks and the car. It's not good. So. Do you think the uh, the lunges with the twenty pound vest have been helping? Because I know you've been doing that and yeah, I've been, you've been going pretty pretty quick. Yeah, I've been doing four hundred with twenty pound vest recently, and I I think that's gonna help um, get the stability and all that shit yep. in the SI. I mean, but like the thing with my SI is like, in my opinion, it's kind of just fucked because I do I do, <laughs> I mean just being straight up like I I do all the shit that you're fucking supposed to do yep. for it every single day, <laughs> and so. it always bothers me. The, uh, what I'm thinking, I noticed Trey, and uh, remember um, I told you about Dr. Dorsey, my buddy from high school, with that mm-hmm. thing I'm hanging in. So my SI has always felt like that since I fucking locked it real bad when I was pulling 600 that one time. Being in that thing for three to six minutes every night before bed, when I lay down, I'm completely deloaded. Like I don't feel anything in sacrum, anything in the SI, <clears throat> and I haven't now then applied it to heavy stuff yet. Mm-hmm. I will after I dunk. Try that though. I think it's huge, dude, because it's like it's almost like using the reverse hyper, but less drastic in exactly L five S one in 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 SI, and it just it just gives you like just enough distraction daily that um, I can tell a pretty big fucking difference. Yeah, I'll have to try that because I yeah. have, I have some issues sleeping sometimes with my SI. I kind of have to sleep a little a little weird on my side or something, yeah, because like, it's it's a little sticky at night and stuff like that. And the thing with my SI is when it when mine popped, yeah, I, I always senior in high school uh back squatting we were warming up there's like 135 on the bar and it just locked up 135 on bar was in the hole and i pushed to come up and it just fucking went i just like literally dropped yeah yeah, yeah. that's what ha- so that's what happened bad. to me when i was pulling it that day and it and it's been all like kind of weird ever since so two things like if you are on the, one of those balls and open up your glutes and then you hang in that thing I think it. I think over time it gives you to where it starts to be like, okay, this is more my normal, not the tight normal, which is what I've had forever. So, mm, so I mean, it doesn't bother me like crazy on a, a normal, any normal day. I wouldn't even say I notice it. Sure. But any time when I, any kind of lifting with my legs though, yeah, it instantly always comes back, and it typically comes back pretty bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's aggressive. All right, back to you, Jake. More questions? <laughs> yes. <laughs> questions. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that one, Corey. I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah, that's uh, – Well, just for, like, people, like, on the site and stuff like that, you know, the lunge nation, I guess. Um, most of us, myself included, you get to the track or wherever you lunge and you just start, right? Um, I don't know if that's what you do or if, like – I think you mentioned you did some stuff. Like, are you have started to do some stuff prior to lunging? Because, like, me – like I kind of like start off a little slow, then I'll kind of increase and like go right. faster and faster. Yeah. So obviously the gym's only five minutes away from the track. So when I'm done doing any heavy lifting, I'll do a lot of stretching, uh, the so right, and then I have the one of the same ball you have, and then the massage gun. Um, <clears throat> I do that a lot of stretching before, but then when I get to the track, I usually take a lap and use my uh, hip, circle. hip circle. Yep. Use the hip circle. Do the sides, um, high knee anything my duck walk but then i just keep some good blood flow going um sometimes i'll do some more lunges before i actually start gotcha. just to get a feel for it if i'm really trying to pr that day um but today i wanted to get in and out and i just went right to the starting line because yeah. i just i need to quit prolonging it sometimes i prolong that lap and we'll take the lap 20 minutes and for sure stand at the line for 10 just shooting the shit and yeah but yeah i usually typically do a lap Gotcha. I really like the duck curious. walks. Anything with it's, the hip, anything with good. the hip circle before lunges, I I always do. It makes a huge difference. Hip I think magic. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree 100. percent I do that every single morning with it. Mm-hmm. So, um, what what I'll be interested to feel for my own performance is like because I've been dedicated to the ISO lunges for now at least a month, if not more, almost five minutes each side every day, and then now with the toe up too, I can feel. Um, 
pr pretty different. So I'll be inter interested to see like when I then go back to the track, like just how secure I feel or how is my initial 400 meter time look at because I've never applied one isometrics like this on the slant board. Definitely never applied them at this level from a lunge standpoint. And I could barely do two minutes when I started. Now I can do five pretty much every day. So that, that, that's the isometric stuff is really interesting. And I'm also starting to apply <clears throat> me and Trey did a couple little videos on it the other day, uh, from a standpoint for upper back too, which I need for my bench, especially with not having that super spinatus, but doing the kind of rotator cuff one, and then almost like a arrow one, um, isometrics to me are just really intriguing on, you know, aiding your process. And that's the other thing I was going to say you weren't able to do five minutes, but probably because you're so tired. But I wonder if that also, even if it was a couple days a week, if you were able to achieve that, if that couldn't, that's got to help too, Jake. Uh, it would help 100%. To be honest, I would dodge them because they were so difficult. Yeah. After the slam. Says the guy who can do I some yeah, I'd yeah. dodge those. <laughs> yeah. Serious. They're fucking hard. They're fucking hard. I think that super difficult, yeah. especially after the slam board. And then the dead mill. And then that's that's your process. You go slant, Every right? Day. Slant or dead. Well, I go dead mill, yeah, slant. slant then that. Yeah, like, I'd have to do lunges first. Because mm -hmm. it's the lactic acid from the other exercises. Yeah. So, yeah. So, actually, I'm glad you said that. So, when I, do, when, when I was trying to figure out this relationship between the jumping and the lunges at the track, mm -hmm. on the weekends for a few weeks, I was doing lunges. Then I would do the five-minute isometric lunge. Then... I would do, um, I didn't have a slant board, but I put my feet up on like a fucking gate or something. I'd find something at the track. And I did that, and at 400 meters, it was it was okay. Um, obviously, at 1,200 or something, that'd be a lot more difficult. But I would, I would say if you added that as a lunge accessory, yeah. essentially, and you could easily smoke a three to five minutes, I, I don't see how that could hurt you. No, yeah, I agree 100%. Yeah, yeah I, I need to start doing them. I need to quit dodging them, to be honest. Dude, they're, so, they're so hard. They're so hard. <laughs> so hard. They're very difficult. And I thought I'd be decent at them too. That's what I thought too. And I do one minute, and I'm like, I don't like. Oh, I don't want to do another set. <laughs> I'm the same way. The most I got was two minutes and five seconds. I'm really feeling good about myself right now. I'm just gonna say because I haven't been able to fucking take part in all the lunging that's been happening in this group. So it's like, but my shit. That shit is hard. I mean, at three minutes. You start, the time is going slow and you start thinking, what am I doing to myself right now? Then I play games with myself, get the 30 seconds, squeeze your glute more, push yeah, into you're this. Just sitting there. Yeah. yeah, bro. It's not like lunging, there's like a, Something a finish going line on. or something. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, it's, uh, it's I noticed a knife in your thigh. Yeah. after the yeah. first week, um, and here's after I, because um, I did five minutes on Saturday coming in to see you on Sunday. Mm -hmm. I was really sore when I got there on Sunday because I was dehydrated doing them because I was I drank like fucking five Guinness the night before. And so I started to realize, I was like, so I came out of seeing how serious you were and I was like, gee, to, I'm talking to myself, obviously. You got to quit fucking drinking. Your fucking legs are sore today. You barely made five minutes because you were obviously depleted of water. Like, the fuck are you doing? You only got two weeks till you got. So all that was going on in my head as I was going home, which is pretty yeah. funny. <laughs> so Trey, the, it's funny that you're dodging them because... Honestly, it might help even clean up your SI too, because yeah. SI is an That's actual dysfunction of stability. Mm -hmm. And so when the body has one moment of instability, it locks the SI. Yeah. So that makes sense if you're, if those are hard, if you don't dodge a motherfucker, that it probably will help your SI. Yeah. And you know what it's funny is they're fucking really, really hard on the yeah. side where the SI is. Yeah, so I'm sure. On my right side, my, le my left SI is the one that's fucked up. Mm -hmm. On my right side, I can do, um, I can hold, is this still going? Yeah, 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 I can still okay. hear you. Um, so I can do, I usually do five, five. Yeah, I can't I, hear anymore. I can still hear you. Yeah, I can't hear you. Um, I usually do five sets of one minute. Okay. And so I can do the one minute five sets easy on the right leg. Mm -hmm. Left leg though, like one, one minute, just one set on the left leg is fucking Hard. So what I do is start with the tough leg first okay. so I can get it organized. I usually do this like first. So start with the Yeah, start with the leg that you know because I, I could I couldn't make it through the mm -hmm. second leg all the way. So if I give my so mine is if this leg is back, that's the hard because that's where it's real tight on that yeah. side. So if this leg and I got a really and I noticed like the first time I ever tried them, I only made a minute and a half. I couldn't squeeze this glute because everything was so tight. Mm -hmm. So then second or third set time doing it when I got three, four, five minutes. I would always start with that leg, 
then take a really short rest and go to the other leg because I know it's my stronger leg. So mm -hmm. it's already fatigued, but then go. And then what I also noticed, which I think helped with performance, when I was able to do that for five minutes, then I went up onto the toe for five minutes. The amount of tension in my calf yeah, and ankle that one. That one just fucking sucks. Fucking <laughs> sucks. Like sucks. <laughs> It sucks. It's not exaggerating. It's so bad. <laughs> so I've I've started a so my two weight uh weightlifting classes Tuesday Wednesday night mm -hmm. I've started to make them hold this position yes. because like with a split jerk I'm like yeah. you're gonna have to fucking hold this position so if you don't feel comfortable here with nothing in your hands yeah like you're gonna you're done for they so, probably fucking hate it yeah but I make them do like maybe thirty seconds oh yeah that's on, not, e that's on not each enough, side Danny. it's too nice no I mean. <laughs> It's hilarious, no, but 30 seconds, it destroys people. In the balance, too. It, it, I mean, you have, like, someone who's, like, you know, maybe 23, mm -hmm. and then you have some, you know, fucking Shirley, who's, like, 55 or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you have a lot of... Different um, populations. Yeah, it, it's pretty interesting. But it, it definitely ultimately makes them more stable, for sure, and gets them re oh, ready, like, in two seconds. My balance has changed dramatically. It's interesting, because when I interviewed Gary Player, the thing he said that you lose the most as you get older is your legs and your balance. He's like, core gets bigger because most people get fatter. He's like, you know, and he got up in the fucking interview and slammed himself in the stomach, which was amazing. And, yes. but he was like, he said the balance and stability. And that's what he said. He noticed as he's 80, he'll be 85 this year. And it's like, he, he's like, did you see my somersault off the diving board on Instagram? I'm like, <laughs> I mean, I was like, yes, it was so good. I just think about getting simply getting up out of the chair when I'm older. Like, yeah. I want that to be like doable. Well, I'll tell <laughs> yeah, you, like I mean, my grandfather like... had both knees replaced. And when he got the second one replaced, his mobility and quality of life like decreased a little bit. Because when both your legs are not quality, as you get old, it's yeah. tough. So if anything we can do, like the things that we're doing with the lunge work and all the squat work and all the SI help, like that's going to preserve us for a long time. Because here's what happens with most men. You see a guy gets a pot belly and he loses his ass. Estrogen goes up, testosterone goes down. Leg training creates more testosterone and growth hormone. You, you, your balance stays, your strength stays. And that's literally what happens. Everybody has their friend that's an old man that they see like they can't keep their fucking pants up. They got their belt this low because their belly's over it and they got no ass. Yeah, ass falls it's the, the deterioration <laughs> of fucking males, I'm telling you. Seriously. 100%. So lunge your fucking shit and get it together. There's your quote. Bang. Yeah. <laughs> like that, shit. Jake? <laughs> Jake's like, yeah, yeah. Because everyone knows somebody like That's that. That's why you lunge right there. <laughs> well, so, well, the thing I'm struggling with is I got to stretch so much for my lower back just from sitting at the computer all day, and especially with my fucking hip issues. It's this right hip, and I don't, I don't know what exactly wrong with it. Like, I need to go get it checked out to see, like, if it's – whether or not it's just, like, weak, if it's, like, fucking too tight all the time, or if there's actually something wrong with it. But, like, fucking sitting at a computer desk all day, man, it fucking – kills my back like if i look in the mirror i can see like my like my ass is sticking out my back's like pushing in like it's it's all fucked up so i've been stretching a, a ton yeah it's funny you say that because i was talking to tyler treadway this morning about the same thing i think we have the exact same issue with our hips it, it pops and, treadway, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> see my thing is dude i can't get my hip to pop like i i can't do it it feels like it wants to but it won't no it feels like if i fucking spread all the way out or if i hold the isometric it feels like there's something in there that's just like fucking squeezing like this. Like it just needs to like break apart basically. That's how, right. my, that's how my left one feels. It's like a wishbone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my right one though just fucking pops all day. I got a good question. I just thought of. Um, you said yesterday in your uh, daily fire, um, just put yourself out there and go swinging. Who would you swing to if you want to interview somebody? Because yours was Gary Player, right? Oh shit. And then Arnold Schwarzenegger. So who would be one person that you would want to? Um, Honestly, for 30 minutes or something like that. Fuck, there's a, there's a few people. Mine would be, because I actually, here's this. Great question, Jake. If I could, yeah, interview, but my like thing in my head is if I could choose people to sit at a fucking dinner table with and just drink a beer with, it'd be The Rock, John Cena, and Cam Newton all together. That's all like that combo. Yeah. yeah. yeah all outlandish cats. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then if I could throw one more in there, it'd be Michael Thomas. Yeah, I like Michael Thomas, bro. For sure. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> Tim Ferriss for sure. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I'm just thinking about all business. He's people. a fucking character, Not, bro. Yeah, Tim Ferriss. I mean, got to. I feel like Rogan would be a fun interview. Yeah, and who the fuck knows what would happen on that? That's interview. fact. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, Tim Ryan. Ferriss just took over our podcast. Whenever we, so I made a mistake. I sent him what we were going to talk about, 
John had to like almost punch him in the face to like give Mike back. That's what he wants to. <laughs> Dude, he wants you to yeah. send it to him. Unbelievable, yeah. bro. And then Ryan Holiday probably. Yeah, I, I like, basically I like all the guys like in that in that realm. That's, that's all his I little crowd. With. That's what I vibe with the most. Yeah. on a day to day basis. Well, yeah, because the Daily Stoic, obviously, you have it tatted on you. Like, yeah. and that's Ryan Holiday and Tim, right? Yeah, Ryan Holiday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But is he – he's up under Tim's situation though, right? I don't I know. Thought they, he was. I mean, there's definitely got to be some type some of correlation, mutual, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, relationship there for sure. But, yeah, he owns – Ryan owns like the Daily Stoic. That's murder in it. Yeah. So, I mean, then he has his <laughs> books and stuff like that. Oh, there is another guy named Mark Manson. Mm-hmm. It's funny because I haven't read his books, but it's the guy who wrote The Subtle Art. I'm not giving a fuck. Oh, yeah. That guy. I got that book. But uh, just like I've read his blog. Such a basic book too. It's a basic, yeah, but, like, Ryan, he actually just interviewed him um, mm. this past weekend. And, like, the whole pre- his whole premise is, like, it's impossible to give zero fucks, but, like, you just got to give the give a fuck about the right things. I like second. that. Just gotta That's min- true. Minimize yeah. your bondage. Yeah. Fucking amazing. Yeah. Truth, the best yeah. title in the world. It's so good. Who's your good show? Um, I'm probably going to interview Kanye West. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that'd be yeah. good as fuck. I'd have to, yeah. I mean, I mean it would be fucking sure. crazy, like. Uh, yeah, <laughs> especially if he's on some shit. <laughs> he was on some Which is most of the time at this point. Uh, yeah, yeah. Bro. it would be. But good. you just respect his like ability to such a degree, don't you, Trey? Yeah, it would be amazing. To and I, and even though I don't agree with a lot of shit he says, sure. I respect that he says it yeah. because a lot of celebrities, you know, I mean, Facts. at the end of the day, he is a pretty broad mainstream celebrity. Uh, I would argue he's one of the most popular people in the world, probably. Yeah, and a lot of <laughs> and a lot of people uh, probably were should be afraid to say any of their views on, you know, hard topics like how he speaks on. He might give zero fucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if there's one person that really doesn't give a fuck, it might be Kanye yeah, West. Yeah. <laughs> you got anybody else or short list? One guy. <laughs> um, I would interview Sean Weatherspoon. Mm-hmm. He's a vintage dude. Oh, yeah, yeah. You mentioned Round him before. Two, uh, yeah, uh, he basically brought, brought vintage streetwear to the mainstream, mm-hmm. per se, in early 2010s. Um, him, I would probably interview a lot of musical artists, to be honest. Yeah. Like, I would love to interview ASAP Rocky, if any yeah, of you guys are yeah. familiar with him. I would love to interview him. I couldn't um, tell you a song, but I know who he is. Yeah, I'd love to interview ASAP <laughs> Rocky. I'd love to interview Frank Ocean. Yeah, I knew you liked Frank Ocean a Frank lot. Frank Ocean what, would be... What intrigues you about Frank Ocean so much, Trey? It's mysterious as fuck. Is he? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Um, I mean, he doesn't release, he hasn't released an album for, what, four or five years now. Yeah. And... The reality is he's probably not going to release one for probably another two or three. Just doesn't care. Um, he finessed Def Jam for twenty million dollars. Yeah, that's dope. <laughs> I think I told you about yeah, that. Yeah, he yeah. did. Amazing. <laughs> he's a, he's just a straight G, and he's been around for so long. And just being able to see his career um, come from I don't know if anybody really listens to it or anybody listening, but uh, yeah. like Odd Future mm-hmm. is how Tyler the Creator, Earl Sweatshirt, uh, Sid. Frank Ocean. That's how they all kind of brought mainstream and, t- and Odd Future was kind of like a, a fuck around group that they had back in before to like like a Wu Tang kind of yeah yeah, yeah. Like two thousand between like two thousand eight and two thousand twelve or so they would go outside and just do dumb shit and record and stuff like that. Mm. But they were they were hip hop group and they all kind of blew up from that. You know, um, it was like an immature group per se, like a an immature they were like group. vlogging and shit basically. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And That's cool. they had TV show on like Adult Swim or some shit. Like yeah. it was, they were doing dumb shit. But they're fucking yeah. off. Yeah, and to see how all of them have just progressed their careers into very, very mature, like, a lot of, Legit. For, example, for example, Tyler the Creator, like, a lot of people look at Tyler the Creator now, and if they would have heard his music five years ago, bro, yeah, they would cancel him so fast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the evolution, so you've seen That's the whole I thing. That's why I love the evolution. Yeah. Yeah. If there was one person I wish I, like, would have had the ability to talk to or interview, it would be Mac Miller. For sure, Mac Miller's Mac Miller. legit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It seemed like yeah, it seemed like every too, yeah. every like severe like where I'd enter a new chapter like in life, maybe be going into high school. He dropped an album there. I think it was Kids. Like I was listening to that in middle school. Then uh, whenever I went to college, he just dropped another album. And it was it was all the time. Like that's all we were listening to. And like his music, I think had the most impact on me. So that's I wish cool. I would have been able mm-hmm. to talk to him. Who's your Honestly, list? Jake, go ahead. Uh, so I was just gonna say one more. Um, well, kind of too. I mean, I keep thinking about Arnold just because, like, if you ever read like Total Recall, like, he's had like one of the most interesting, fucking fascinating lives in the <laughs> world. Like, yeah. it's mind blowing to see like where he started and everything. So there's so much to take away from there. And then like um, another guy that comes to mind is uh, I haven't heard a lot of his stuff, but like I just there's a couple of his movies that are just like 
they're in the top five like instantly for me. It's Christopher Nolan. Yeah. He did like the Batman, one of the Batman trilogies. He did Inception, which is probably my favorite movie. Interstellar is another one. So he's kind of he's, yeah, he's yeah. kind of trippy. <laughs> His movies are <laughs> amazing. Movies. Trippy. Yeah. So he kind of has like a um, a pretty good relationship with uh, Hans Zimmer who's like a musical composer and stuff that I listen to a lot, but like those two guys would be <laughs> very yeah. fucking interesting. Yeah. Anyway, my, my first one would be David Goggins for sure. Absolutely. Oh yeah. hundred percent. Um, another one that comes to mind is a guy named Rob Bailey. Mm -hmm. I've been following him for a while. Yeah. He has a few long. companies, so, uh, he's just a crazy guy and I just like his work ethic and what he stands for it as well. So I don't, I don't know much about them. I think cause they were like in the NPC world as I was coming up, but they've only progressively grew their businesses and done really well and do it in their own way too, which yeah. has been fun to watch. Yeah. And I, I've been following them for a while and when they were in Pennsylvania, now they're in Montana and just the way it's gone and their, their brand, mm -hmm. it's just completely different. And I was put on to him from a buddy of mine. So same one that put me on to you. So yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to speak on, um, being able to interview some of these people and that you've spoke about, right? Tim Ferriss. Amazing. Um, Eric Thomas was one of the guys I wanted to interview real bad, which we got to interview and I got to spend some time with him in Chicago. Um, having the, uh, obviously spending time with Arnold, which I've spoke about a bunch of times is un unbelievable. But Gary player was one of those ones that felt a little elusive and because of his age being 85 and he's in the category with Jack Nicholas and Arnold Palmer. I, I was just like, I, and I did the daily fire on throw a line because it's literally what I did. I was like, Really wanting to work with the PGA, um, which I'm working on right now. And I was like, where else would be the best place to start if I could get the guy who brought fitness to golf? And it's somebody me and my grandfather talked about a lot, about uh, as did we with Arnold and Jack Elaine. So Jack Elaine passed away, but I would have loved to interview him because he was like the person that had like a fucking workout show in the 50s on TV. He was amazing. And so when I threw it out and his daughter got back to me literally like in a day, I just sent him a DM on Twitter and I figured he probably didn't run his social media cause he's so old. Right. And she was like, Oh yeah. How about Monday at nine 15? And I was like, fuck. And <laughs> I want, <laughs> yeah, it was literally like that. So like, okay. So for all these years that I wanted to interview <laughs> Gary player, that's what it took. What the fuck am I doing? <laughs> so, which is the reason why I put um, that daily fire together. Cause I was like, Literally, the turnaround was less than a week. And Sorry. then the leverage of that turnaround has already been shown by my talks with the PGA because I was able to get a guy like that because we're going to, you know, our team can put together a good product. Like it, um, yeah, I think it's going to end up being something great mm -hmm. or the opportunity of something great. But I'm telling you, I wouldn't have been as confident in calling the call with the PGA if I didn't have that. All from sure. just a fucking being like, all right, well, let's see if dude checks his DM. I mean, come on. <laughs> it, like he doesn't know who I am or what I did. They had no, they have no clue. Yeah. So, I mean, it doesn't hurt that I'm verified. I know. And I have a following, but at the end of the day, they don't know me from the next fitness guy that has the same or more followers. For you sure. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So to me, it was, um, that was a really cool experience to listen to my own fucking, um, advice that I give out yeah. and and then I think it's going to open up some really unique opportunities I think that when I think about you know the interview with Tiger Arnold Gary just recently with Tim Eric Thomas the those are like the ones that I like got a little nervous for but I was excited about because I'm thinking I'm about to extract information from some people that have done these things better than the rest of the people pretty much ever in the world like it's such a minute level percentage of greatness in all of their fields that that's where I get so excited about interviewing and understanding and learning that it's like I've got I got lost when I was interviewing Arnold at the gym for the original one where he answered something and I didn't even hear what he said like I kind of heard it but I was because I was so in the fucking moment of something that I had dreamed about that it was like an eerie level of so cool. Mm -hmm. it, it was re it was really something so anyway so yeah watch the daily fire if you never watched it because i think i think i had actually a decent amount of people hit me up on it i wasn't like crazy yelling like some of my fires but it, it really will match that little thing right there is going to mature into something that i can't release yet but i think it's about to be super fucking dope yeah. so like, I, great question 
Um, just real quick, like on Tim and Arnold, like was yeah. there something I don't know if you remember or not, but like was there something that you really wanted to ask them, or was there something that really what what's most intriguing so, to you? I would say my Tim interview was lackluster. Like we just didn't because he just ran it, yeah. and we had to steal it back from him. Yeah. I would say my interaction with him in person was okay. better. Yeah. So what I thought was interesting about Tim was when I met him, I was at uh, I was at an Arnold. A charity event poker tournament it was like the second or third one that i'd ever been at i've told this story before but i'll tell it again it's actually the pictures right there from it and so i went there and i heard he was going to be there i saw the guest list or whatever because i was still working with arnold at the time so i got insight on all this stuff and i was like as soon as i got there i'm looking for him 100 percent. and so i walk up and say hey tim i'm Corey gregory you know one of the co-founders of muscle farm I, i'm really excited to meet you i read the four-hour work week he goes oh you're the squat guy i said i am so he knew what's up because he's friends with the guys from Barbell Shrug too. So yeah. I think he had listened to the episode or at least was aware of it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, you know, I'd squat every day for like, I don't know, fucking two years or something at that point. And he's like very intrigued. He said like, I'm very intrigued by the whole process. And I was like, I was like, yeah. And I was like, I was like, all right, I got his attention. So he'd never own up to this, but I'm gonna tell you exactly what I did. So <laughs> this is some good stuff. So. I knew he definitely wanted to fucking basically interview me, but maybe he would never put me on the podcast. I don't know. Like I wasn't a big name, right? So I went to four different places in that, within that event on purpose and he followed me to every one of them because I would answer a couple questions and then I'd go over to get like a slice of turkey. Then I answered the question. Then I went over to, there was like some fucking Louis the 14 cognac, some shit that's like a hundred thousand or ten thousand a bottle or some shit we were taste testing and i went to that and then he came over i don't even know what the fuck it is somebody can look it up it's pretty serious um and then i went over and literally i was like all right this motherfucker is like really interested in what i got to say he's following me around this party and because he was like interviewing me every step of the way it was amazing He's and like- yeah, because I mean, he and then I was giving him just enough, right? <laughs> so and then, yeah, it was it was actually pretty epic. I thought it was gonna. But see, here's what I didn't do very well, though. Well, at first, I beat him for the watch, which was epic, and he wrote about it on Reddit actually, like a week later. Reddit. Yeah, because <laughs> somebody sent me the message. <laughs> so when you get to Arnold's, they give a um, fucking Richard Milley away for the winner, which for you guys don't know, that's like a hundred thousand dollar watch. There's like fifty people at this thing. And you got like Don Cheadle and Joe Magdanello and like fucking Annie Dukes there, like the won the fucking World Series of Poker. So I get I get sat at her table and I'm thinking, I don't even know how to play poker, first off. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> so so here, so so but I remember the year before last, the guy who got last got a five thousand dollar watch. So they give last place a watch. So I'm like, I'm all in for last place. So I see, all right, I got Annie Duke, who's the fucking World Series of Poker leader or whatever. She's there to essentially like basically beat people to try to, I think, help not give the wall or get, I don't know. She's there for some reason, but that the move the poker around. So I'm just keep raising her, bro. And everybody <laughs> fucking folds. And it's just me and her. <laughs> and I go all in on the first hand. All my turn. Because <laughs> yeah, right? I'm trying to lose. Yeah. So here I am. No fucking clue what I'm doing. I'm all in against Annie Duke, who's won the World Series of Poker at Arnold's house with all these fucking celebrities. And I'm either going to epically beat Annie Duke on the first hand, or I'm going to lose and win this $5,000 watch. (laughs) To me, that's a great situation, (laughs) right? And then when I lose or win, I'm going to go smoke cigars with Arnold because he don't play poker. He's just over there hanging out. So anyway... I go all in. I barely lose. Like, I forget what my hand was or whatever, but it was actually like pretty fucking close. And they're like, all right, first loser, tag Hoyer, fucking $5,000 watch. 30 seconds later, Tim Ferriss goes out. He had the same fucking idea, but I beat him to it. (laughs) And so what happened with him though was, right, he was, (laughs) so he was at a different table than me. And the problem was everyone thought he was hacking the fucking cards. So they all folded and he won the hand. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> and so then when he comes over and he's like, you beat me at the exact like strategy I had. I said, yeah, when I write a book, I'll probably mention that in my first chapter too. Like, <laughs> fuck with him, you know what I mean? And so it was one of those things where then, but what I didn't do a very good job of, and this is all within relationship building, especially at that level, 
it's like I always talk about, you don't try to like fuck the chick on the first time you meet her, right? But in that situation, he had already basically interviewed me. He had um, fucking, we had a situation with that. I should have said, yo, let me get your contact info. He probably would have gave it to me. Instead, I was a little bitch or I just forgot and didn't because then I would have followed up probably would have been on the podcast, might have had a different relationship. So I definitely missed that a little bit. Now I was able to get him on the podcast later, but it was th- that whole thing had been years, you know what I'm saying? But that was my my interaction which was actually pretty fucking yeah, hilarious. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. remember pieces of it, but I wanted yeah. to tell Yeah. That's a full story. Yeah, yeah. And but when I went all in with Annie Duke though, I was That's like epic, inside dude. laughing to myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like just like staring in the eyes like I was just like fucking, fucking I was like it. this is fucking hilarious like because yeah. I literally have one probably shouldn't even be here two have no clue what I'm doing yeah. and I'm pushing a fucking raising a world series poker champion it's like, who's this so <laughs> whenever whenever you're at these events is it like pretty much every event you go to you're like holy like do you have like a, some realization no. like holy fuck this is like I think I'm it's at. always like the um I think the first time I saw like Clint Eastwood I was like, you were like, holy fuck. Yeah, because not even that. And for a lot of people that are younger, don't even know who he is. But I guess he's still directing movies like 80 something. But like my I remember like my parents and like my grandpa, like Dirty Harry, fucking like all those, mo- those Western movies. And like I walk in the kitchen and like he's standing there talking to Sylvester Stallone. And then I didn't even know who James Cameron was. He was standing right there. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm thinking to myself Spectre like, Avatar. No yeah, problem. exactly. You know, Terminator 2, whatever. And so I'm thinking to myself like. All right, G. Like, you're you're supposed to be here, but like, are you supposed to be here? But I'm so. here, and yeah. every year Rachel goes. You think we're still on the list? <laughs> I said I think we're still on the list, hon. She's like, all right. You think you think you're still on the list? I'm like, yeah, we're good. So it's it's pretty fun. That's now with great. COVID, I don't know if we'll be there this year, but yeah. That, that but the first time I was ever there though, Cole, that was probably like the best. Even though I didn't know anybody. I just knew the cigar guy that, and I was literally sitting on the back porch smoking a cigar thinking, all right, you've done enough crazy shit to get yourself here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even if you never get back to this spot again, I'm on Arnold's patio smoking a cigar that's and he's sick. my business partner and yeah. none of these motherfuckers know me and you know, and that's okay. But that, that yeah. was, yeah, that was a real, that, that was a really cool, cool realization for yeah. sure. So, all right, shit, man, that was a great episode. Fuck Jake, yeah. I, I gotta, I gotta tell you, I, I'm so excited for you to do it again. Hopefully, you ask me to run the fucking clock again, and I think that this is just we're gonna change some stuff. I'm gonna help you with it. At the end of the day, I don't even think it's. I, I think you're gonna literally smoke it. Like I really believe that that was a great learning experience, but it's going to be like a chip shot this time. I think it's going to be hard, but I think you're gonna wire it into where I think you're gonna beat it by a decent amount. Like, I really believe that. Uh, hopefully you believe that too, because I think that's, that's what's going to happen. Um, you guys got anything else for him as we kind of get out of here? No, dude, I'm excited. excited you got anything you want to, uh, tell the guys on a uh, Corey G fitness? You did a great job last time. Uh, yeah, just, uh, I've, I got a lot of support from it too. Um, the guys on there, a few actually, uh, came out to the track and watched. So, okay. which was really cool to see. And, um, yeah, don't dodge the lunges. Just keep at them. <laughs> Serious. Just quit dodging it. Um, and don't feel sorry for yourself. Uh, I any seventy five days ago, I would have felt sorry for myself failing at something like that, especially with yourself being there. Um, one of my idols growing up. It's like I feel like I let somebody down, but just get back up and keep after it. Yeah. Before we get out of here, talk about that because that were you? I, I'm sure you weren't surprised, but the support, even though you didn't get it, like that right there, has to feel awesome, Jake. It it, it really did it felt amazing um they all hung out for a few minutes after and said congrats i mean i didn't win anything but i mean uh my fiance put together a breakfast had some family come over and she had a couple signs and she bought me a new gallon that's not the right one but um uh so (laughs) (laughs) serious i said said fucking green (laughs) i'm serious it was um the support was overwhelming <laughs> yeah. to be honest uh, i got a lot of good feedback on on instagram people commenting and direct messaging me and made me feel really good and uh gave me even a little bit more confidence going into the second attempt and uh it's gonna happen and i 100 percent believe it i know that that day everybody has a bad day and it just happened to be on my calendar date that i had unfortunately but that's not going to stop me from attempting it again because i know i'll get it 
I love it. Like Arnold told me after the MP shit, it's all about how you stand up next. It's not about just that exact one. So for King Holland, Cole Susack, that's Danny Walter. And at Trey Speed, I'm your boy, Corey G. G-G-G-G unit, we out.